of Hardin County Education on Community Television. Welcome to this edition of EC3 HOSA Medical Moments. On Medical Moments, we like to bring you topics about health care and some of the things that's really important in our community. Today, we're going to look at one of those community partners that really supports our students in all of our schools in this county, not only, but statewide, internationally. Uh, this club is a club of service. Joining me today is Tony Bishop. <laughs> Tony is a city council member for the city of Elizabethtown, and he's a longtime member of the Lions Club. Welcome, Tony. Hi. Tell me about how you got started with the Lions Club. Um, it, we're early in my childhood. Well, not early in my childhood, but a bunch of us kids, we would always go to the Lions Club's pancake breakfast and just eat all you can eat. That was one of their projects, and... That was our favorite one because uh, we could eat all we could eat. Uh, but later on, as uh, time went on, I got involved with the, uh, at the time, the Elizabethtown JCs, and I found out that a lot of those JCs, as they got out, they became lions. Or, and, and, so, and, and so it just seemed to be my progression, too. Uh, but Lions Clubs, you have to be invited. And so John Arnett was our city attorney. And so uh, he invited me to be, to a club meeting. And after three visits, if they like you, they'll take you in. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess they liked me. And mm -hmm. so uh, I've been serving since around 1996. Well, that's amazing. What are some of the things that uh, the Lions Club does in the local area? In the local area, we have three Lions Clubs, actually. We have the North Harden Lions Club, the Glendale Lions Club, or and... Uh, in the Lisbethtown Lions Club. But you all work together. We try to work together, uh, actually in Hodgenville, LaRue County. So this weekend is the Lincoln Days. Mm -hmm. So we'll be over there helping them fry funnel cakes this weekend. <laughs> so that's their project. Now the Lions Club does something specific with vision. Do you know uh, where that history came from and how they became yes, the uh, vision helpers? Sure. <laughs> uh, in 1917, uh, Melvin Jones, a uh, local businessman in Chicago, he got together with a group of friends of his business people and they started a group of community service and uh, they decided, hey, let's spread this to other places. And the first convention that they had of this group was in Texas and that was in 1917. And uh, at that point they came up with the name and they called themselves Lions. Um, in 1925 at their first convention and it just happened that folks from Canada and Mexico was there so at that point they became Lions International with those two clubs those two countries uh, but their keynote speaker was Helen Keller oh wow and so she challenged the Lions at that time to be her Knights of the Blind and so ever since then Lions clubs all over the world, our main focus has been vision-related uh, things that help prevent blindness. That gave me chills when you just said that. She was one of my, I remember reading her biography yeah. as a fourth grader, mm -hmm. and I was just overwhelmed with what she was able and capable yeah. of doing. Right. And so her story is, is so remarkable. As a local Lions Club, what do you do? I usually see a lot of Lions in open houses and things. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about what uh, those individuals are doing. Well, and again, we, a lot of our fundraising and stuff we do, we have three major fundraisers for Elizabethtown Lions Club, but all of our money has to go back to the community. And so years ago, they bought some eye screening ma machines, the Titmus machines, and so we go through the school system and we would screen children's eyes and, and to try to catch things. Uh, to, mostly instead of the 
turn your hand this way and up and A, E, and I, but you can actually look through the machines and we can actually refer that young child or student to an eye doctor if their vision needs to be caught early that they can correct their vision or any other issues that may come up with their eyesight. On an annual basis, I'm sure you do thousands of those. Thousands. Yeah. Uh, and now we have a, as technology has moved forward, uh, we have a camera and we have a program called KidSight. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and the primary purpose of that program is to try to find young children as early as three. Wow. Uh, and actually, we can do even younger than that. Um, I think it's six months old. But uh, we look for lazy eye. Yeah. And so, uh, and a child that is diagnosed or that we can catch that uh, for a parent uh, because they can't tell tell you that we can't see, right. you know, or something's <laughs> wrong. Right. Uh, so we can actually take a picture of their eye, and at that moment, uh, we have folks in the club that's been trained to, to look at different things in that photo, and uh, and at that point, uh, we can refer, have that picture sent, given to you, so that you could take it to an eye doctor and for further evaluations, but if it is caught early, especially before the age of five, mm -hmm. it can be it corrected. So, oh, I had no idea. So, uh, oh, my goodness. So it, it yeah. really has to be done. But it actually can do other things even for those older. So we can actually screen people up into their 90s using that camera. What are some of the things that you all do catch early on when you administer these? Um, one thing that was caught early, uh, and one of the ladies that does that for our club, um, was a young child who actually had a detached retina. Oh my goodness. Uh, and that was one that was uh, probably, now she's done some others, uh, but that one was probably one that was very important for us. And we have different programs involved, not just locally, but all over the state. We have our Kentucky Lions Eye Foundation, uh, which all of our clubs help support. That's also our non-charge, is our nonprofit part of our, of our organization. Uh, and we help with not just the screening of the eyes we do locally, but people that may need help with operations. Uh, so we have the thing called the Patrons Fund. Uh, and that fund is usually financed through our local Lions. Uh, but we will uh, take those dollars and help with operations. If there's surgery, eye surgeries, different things like that, that could help people that might be a little in need of some extra cash to help do that. I know that at one time I was working in the North End and I was talking to the Family Resource Youth Service Center, a couple of coordinators, and they were talking about that the that uh, some of those visual uh, acuity tests had come back and they would have maybe 80 to 90 students that yeah. need glasses. Yeah. And yeah. so do you all help us in that role yes. too? Yes, yes. So within our club, we have funds set aside just for helping people with eye exams and getting eyeglasses. Uh, so we'll assist with that. I was going to say, vision is so important to all of us, and yeah. if you don't have it, it's, yeah. it would be amazing, yeah. you know, yeah. and such. Um, what are some of the upcoming fundraisers? You said they have three normally, so where are those? We just pancake finished breakfast, just yeah. the red pancake breakfast. <laughs> it's usually in our spring, uh, and then we just finished our golf scramble. It's very successful. Uh, and then we have our chicken barbecue. Uh, each year. So we're always looking at different things to do, but outside of fundraisers, our main thing is service to the community. And now, do, you, do you take on different service projects annually? Yes, yes. We, actually, Lions International itself has about eight global initiatives that we call global initiatives, uh, besides our challenge from Helen Keller. Uh, but we deal primarily with vision, uh, we have the pediatric cancer. Uh, we do things with hunger relief, environment, and just it kind of just goes down from there. But those those five is our core thing. So we'll we'll do a lot of things with the environment, be it if it's helping people pick up trash or or working with young people doing things that works with planting trees. Um, 
then we do the hunger, so we definitely try to do things where we donate funds to Feeding America and diff just different little things. Um, you mentioned you have to be invited. <laughs> yes, yes. So how could people get involved or become a little bit more knowledgeable? <laughs> we have our local website, uh, ElizabethtownKentuckyLions.org. Uh, you can go there or you could go to Lions International's website and then just search local clubs and just find a club in our area. Uh, and usually if you do it that way, then they will forward that information on to us and we'll get in contact with you or just uh, see one of us with our pins, our logos on and or at one of our projects and we'll get you an application and bring in. Do you have any special stories about some young people that you've helped? Uh, there's several. I but, was going to uh, say probably through the years it's uh, so many. But a lot of it is just uh, the biggest one that is really great for our club, and it was just as we got into our club, was a young lady that needed uh, help with their eyesight. And we had screenings and just came in and did that. And uh, she could see, but it was, we have a thing now we're starting up called a low clinic, a low vision clinic mm -hmm. through our foundation. And so, uh, it wasn't that she was blind at the time, but we caught it. And uh, and from there, we kind of just, she became our our person she, that we just took on. We adopted her as a club, and uh, we watched her grow and, and uh, provided uh, technology equipment. We had, uh, we would do computers, and we would provide computers and uh, the macular, Generation. generation type screens and mm -hmm. stuff at that time uh, for her and so that helped her get through school and uh, graduate she went on to college mm -hmm. she she's now married has children <laughs> uh, and it's just been it was a great it's just great and everybody in our club we just we, we loved her she would come in and talk to us tell us things that she was doing and it, it was great Definitely made, you make changes and you make lives better, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Do you know the history behind the, why did they use a lion? The lion, again, <laughs> at that convention in 1917, they was trying to still come up with the name of what their group was going to be, and then someone just came up with the lion as being strength. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and then the main, I mean, the, it's flowing, and it's, and it's very encompassing that it seems to touch every everything out there with its just its main. Uh, so that became became it. But the biggest part of it is the two heads. Mm -hmm. uh, and so the one head faces forward and one faces back. So the traditions of lions is very strong. And so we always want to remember our history, always looking back. But we also want to look to the future moving forward uh, and if you really look close at the emblem uh, and this was told to me I never noticed it until it was told to me and but it makes it's really kind of important to us now is the whiskers on the lion's head facing back tends to be more curled oh cool. okay but the whiskers on the lion facing forward is straight so that shows the youthfulness, we represents our youthfulness. So we're looking for younger, younger folks to take us forward, to keep us moving forward and growing, but remembering the strength and wisdom of those that's been behind us. Yeah. So, so this is something that's definitely been rewarding to you and to the community at it large. Has, it has, it has. There's a lot that, that we have there. And there's, we have a lot of programs from the international body all the way down, a uh, lot, of, lot of character development, uh, leadership development, uh, and definitely community service. Yeah, that's amazing. Again, where can they find local information? Again, it'll be at the Elizabethtown Lions Club, Elizabethtown Lions, Kentucky, mm -hmm. uh, .org. And do you all have a present location that you have your meetings? We eat. We now <laughs> said eat, but we'd like to eat. Uh, but uh, we have our meetings at the Home for Philanthropy, 
there, and uh, we meet in their lower level, and we meet on the first and third Monday, first and third Tuesdays mm -hmm. of each month, and we have a little dinner at 6 o'clock, just some fellowship time, uh, just to have some camaraderie and just to, just to fuss, cuss, discuss whatever's going on. Um, we're a non-political group. We're a non-religious group. We don't talk anything about our businesses or, or anything. We don't talk religion too much uh, because it's a worldwide organization. Um, and, but we do talk about service and things going on in community gossip. Uh, uh, but uh, things that just keeps us, uh, keep that fellowship going. And then at 6.30, uh, we start our meetings, and we only meet for an hour. If you meet any longer than that, somebody may throw a napkin or something at you. <laughs> so, uh, uh, so, but we do try to keep it fun and entertaining. And, and, so. and you said younger people. Is there an age that you need to be in order to be a member? You need to be 18 years of age okay. yeah. to be a lion. Uh, we actually have a younger group called the Leos, mm -hmm. uh, and so they are from 12 to 18. Wow, that's great. Uh, and usually we, we have two forms of that. A lot of the times it starts within our school systems, uh, but we also have community-based Leos. Uh, so we're looking at starting, possibly starting one. We have some members in our club that are interested in getting involved with doing something with our young people, and it's... It's just like having a June, it's like being a kitty mm -hmm. version of, mm -hmm. of lions. But a lot of those, those Leo clubs, they do the same thing. They, they come up with their own projects. They, they learn how to uh, do leadership skills and, and working with the community leaders and, and putting on things that does things just like, like the lions club itself does. Well, thank you again, Tony, for coming in today and sharing that information with us. And again, just for our audience, to remind them, where do they go? ElizabethtownKentuckyLions.org. Uh, I'm Gina Ryan. Thank you for joining us on this edition of EC3 HOSA Medical Moments.